Welcome to the Salt Sideline Report. I'm Leanna Hawkins, and we are here in New York at Salt 2021, joined by Bill Cohen, the founding partner at Puck. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Bill, you were on a panel today talking about hedges and different things that are going on in the industry right now. I know you had some major people joining you in that conversation. What are your key takeaways from that today? And then I, I want to talk to you about some Puck stuff. Sure. I mean, I think we're... The reason why it's relevant that we're talking about hedging and risk mitigation in the markets today is you have stock market at an all-time high, pretty much, come off it a little bit. You have the bond market completely out of control, in my opinion, uninvestable. You know, interest rates have never been lower in the 4,000-year history of interest rates. So people are taking a lot of risk for which they're not getting rewarded for. So if you look at, not to get too technical, but I think you know, the viewers can handle it, is uh, the high yield bond, average high yield bond now yields under 4%. So back in the day when I was an investment banker and Mike Milken was roaming the world, uh, you know, the yield on a high yield bond would be 10, 11, 12%. And then there would be warrants attached to that as well, increasing the return for investors. So what happened to that? Why are investors now willing to accept so much less for taking similar kinds of risks. It absolutely blows my mind. So that's why I was happy to talk to Mark Spitznagel, who is an incredible investor who's figured out a way, which he really is reluctant to share, unfortunately, uh, with the rest of us, uh, how to mitigate risk for the investors in his hedge fund. He essentially uh, sells them a form of insurance that costs them you know, maybe 3% a year of their portfolio that he's uh, insuring. Uh, and so it's a cost every month of 3%, like insurance is a cost. But when, you know, the shit hits the fan, if I may use that word, yeah. uh, you know, then the return is astronomical. So like in March 2020, when the shit hit the fan, he and his investors made a ton of money. And we have seen some alternative products like that with different hedging strategies come out over in the last 18 months or in the last few years. And particularly ones we saw them perform very well in 2020 when the markets, when the shit hit the fan in March. And um, it's great that you're talking about it here at Salt this week. In real life, we love that. You um, are a very prominent person in the editorial world. You've written three New York Times bestselling books. You have a new one coming out soon. You were also an investment banker for 17 years. So your different areas of expertise fit perfectly well into the discussions we have here at SALT. Um, tell me what you're doing at Puck. So uh, Puck is a new media platform, I guess, where um, you know we, we just went live with our website, which is at puck.news uh, and we've brought together an incredible group of high-powered journalists with the guiding principle that journalists should be rewarded for their content and they should have equity in the company that they are working for you know so you can work at the New York Times you can work at the Wall Street Journal you know I, I spent a long time at Vanity Fair which is owned by Condé Nast but I never had equity right. in my in my writing in my material in anything. And so I've written uh, six books. I have a seventh uh, coming out uh, next year about the rise and fall of GE called Power Failure, Selfless, Shameless Self-Promotion. Okay. Uh, now I have equity in my books. Mm -hmm. I share that equity with my publisher, but I have equity. So if it's a bestseller, which is great, you know, he do, they do well, I do well. But, you know, my name's on that book and, you know, I have to live by that, the content of it, whether it is you know reflects well on me whatever that's i want you know i don't remember vernon jordan who was a great uh friend of bill clinton and a great civil rights leader and an incredible guy who just died and and he worked at lazard where i worked although i worked there before he did you know when i was writing my book about lazard which was my first book uh, he told me that that book was going to say more about me than it was going to say about lazard and i always thought that was incredibly wise and insightful. So I like having equity. I mean, maybe that's because I'm a former banker, but I like having equity. And with Puck, we can have equity. And I really appreciate that. 
Well, I like that you're bringing that financial aspect and awareness of investment and having value in the things that you're creating and carrying that forward in, in the way of equity in the company that you're building that content with. Um, and obviously you have brought Puck together from your, your banking and financial experience with your editorial experience. And I'm sure a lot of the creators and, and people in the editorial world on your platform are going to find that very useful for them financially. Well, I hope that what we write will benefit readers and that they'll take enjoyment out of it. I mean, uh, digital media platforms are going for big prices now. And, you know, Politico just was sold for a billion dollars, but that was owned by Mr. Albritton and not by the writers mm -hmm. who, you know, created that huge value. Mm -hmm. And if Puck is successful, still the jury's out, but if Puck is successful and it ends up being sold uh, someday, one day, then the writers who started it will be benefiting from it. And I think that's fabulous. That's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. And as someone myself also involved in the editorial world, I think it's a wonderful way to bring the two worlds together and show the real value of creators and people that are putting the work into this content, right? I mean, look, you know, all of a sudden there's an explosion of content creators and value for them. Right. So it's the 22 year old Instagram star. It's 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 LeBron James. It's it's all these people with incredible skills and talent. And they're sort of disintermediating the person who used to take that value away from them. And I think that's incredibly important. And I think writers deserve that, too. I mean, like I said, I get it when I write a book. Why shouldn't I get it when I write uh, opinion pieces or essays or or narrative, non, you know, narrative uh, uh profiles or whatever it is like I used to do in Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. It's not enough anymore, you know, just to pay a writer by the word. Right. And by the way, those numbers are coming down dramatically. Writers are content creators. We have brands and, and we deserve to have that be monetized at some point if we do a good job. I mean, nobody should do it for us because of, you know, who we are. But if they like what we're writing and they subscribe to it, we should benefit from that. I completely agree, and it's it's wonderful that you're bringing that to the conversation in the forefront here at SALT this week. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here, Bill.